<laughs> so, uh, good afternoon. Um, it's great to be here today. It's wonderful to hear all these speeches, and I'm afraid uh, that they've taken all my thunder. I do want to thank Patty. I want to thank you especially for being here today because you could have been so many different places today than downtown Winston-Salem. Um, I said to somebody earlier today, well, this is football day. They had a big parade here, and uh, people were going off to the football games. Uh, but you're here because of an important issue. Uh, I've been involved with, as um, you just learned, I've been involved with North Carolina Right to Life since 1973. We get our name from the Declaration of Independence, which talks about certain rights that come from God, and chief among these rights are the right to life. Without the right to life, we, we can't afford ourselves of any of other rights, including uh, the right to religious freedom and the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. So it is really critical. But we're a, a small group here today, and we've got a lot of people that we need to reach. And I hope you've been involved, and I hope you will be, continue to be involved in getting out the word to your to like-minded family and friends what we are we need to happen uh, between now and November 6th. And after November 6th, we can't give up the fight. We don't know how it will turn out. We are hoping that it will turn our way. We have had promises from uh, many of the candidates, uh, most especially from uh, Governor Romney, that he will repeal the HHS mandate. There are still some people that don't realize that. I see on my Facebook page people saying, well, will he really do that? We can only take him at his word. And his word is that he will repeal Obamacare, which contains this HHS mandate. He will strike down the HHS mandate. And so we have to go on the words of the people that are running for office and put our trust in them. And then we will follow behind in making sure that they follow through on their words. Uh, Representative Fox uh, has, I was thinking of when uh, Major Dave spoke about how he disagreed with, might disagree with Representative Fox on some things. North Carolina Right to Life and National Right to Life, uh, of whom we are the state affiliate. We have no issues with Representative Fox because she's 100% pro-life, and we're so proud of her. <laughs> Unfortunately, this year, uh, we don't have anyone running for U.S. Senate. Uh, in, the, in March, the U.S. Senate rejected uh, an attempt 51 to 48, that would have prevented Obamacare from this HHS mandate that violates our religious freedom, the religious freedoms of, uh, of various uh, organizations and businesses. Because I don't know if you know, uh, the Hobby Lobby, the owners of Hobby Lobby have filed suit against this HHS mandate because they say it violates their religious freedom. So it's not only religious organizations, it's businesses as well that are being attacked uh, because of this HHS mandate. But in North Carolina, for North Carolina, we had one U.S. Senator, uh, Senator Hagan, who voted against uh, providing this protection against the HHS mandate. And one senator, Senator Burr, who is on our side. And though he, he's not up for re-election this year, it's important that you know that we have a divided U.S. Uh, representatives from for the unit, U.S. Senate uh, with regard to the life issues. Uh, senator Hagan has, uh, has stood against us whenever we have uh, tried to get anything through that would protect unborn children and protect religious freedom. And Senator Burr has been with us 100%. So uh, we thank Senator Burr for what he has done, and I hope you'll remember that when election time rolls around uh, in the future. So what can you do? There's a lot to do. I hope you're like I am, that you've looked for every opportunity to make a difference. Uh, to talk to family, to talk to friends. 
I think people on my Facebook page are getting sick and tired of seeing all that I post up there. You know, there are so many opportunities. You can make phone calls from home. You can go to uh, work uh, for the candidates that support the values that that you so, that you support. Uh, you can uh, go and get materials from the table over here and take these materials. We have uh, a comparison piece that compares Mitt Romney and Barack Obama on the life issues. We are a single issue organization, so we do uh, limit our focus to the life issues. We're not a multi-issue organization. Our fight has been to protect that basic right, the right to life. And, um, and so I would encourage you to take these flyers, give them to family and friends, let them know what the, the two candidates stand for, and then they're also, with these packets, the North Carolina Right to Life Voter Guide, which are all the candidates that the North Carolina Right to Life PAC is supporting in this election. Now, you may know who all the candidates are. You may not need this information, but but there are people that you know that do need this information, so I encourage you to take it. And if people in that you come across don't know, please give them the information so that they will know. There are a couple of other things that are just very basic that no one's mentioned today, so I'm going to mention things that I haven't heard mentioned. I saw on my Facebook page someone say that uh, some people had voted, and then after they voted, they realized that they had not voted for the president. You must vote the president, the judges, local candidates, and issue separately. If you do not vote them separately and you vote a straight party ticket, you will be missing the president. So please, this is not only for you, this is for anyone you know. Please make sure that they know this. Send it on your email list, put it on your Facebook. If you are do, use Twitter, tweet it out. Make sure people know. I put it on my Facebook page and then someone said, no, you don't. You can vote the president by voting straight party ticket. I said, you better check that out. And there, un, regrettably, there probably been some people that intended to go to the polls and vote the president and they didn't vote it because they pulled a straight party ticket. I also heard some people saying, listen, double check. When you uh, fill out your, battle, uh, your ballot, whether it be a paper ballot or an electronic ballot, as I uh, would uh, do if I go to my polling place, uh, double check that you have circled the right circles, that you haven't anything blank that you wanted to fill in. If you're doing electronic balloting, Check the paper ballot. There's a paper ballot off to the left and make sure that it's recording what you want recorded. If it's not, you make sure that uh, the, someone there in that polling place knows that there's been something that's gone awry, awry with polling. It is so very important that we share this information with our family and friends because we cannot lose any votes in this election. Every vote is so very important. I heard that uh, our current president won because he got four votes per precinct. That's how few votes it takes. Some people asked me uh, when I did some calling, um, and I was calling to ask them if they were going to early vote. They said, well, why, sh why should I early vote? And I said to them, well, I'll, you know, I told this person that he sounded like a young man, and so I didn't want to offend him by talking about my elderly parents. But I said, you know, my, my parents uh, decided that they wouldn't early vote. They just wait till election day. And then election day, it was, the weather was very bad. And being elderly, they didn't want to go vote. And with me being out of town, you know, I just couldn't run down there and take them to the polls. And they didn't vote. That was two votes. They had been told, well, you know, the person, the, the person I was asking them to vote for, I knew was in a tough race. 
And they said, well, I understand he's, he's going to make it. He, he doesn't need our votes. He did need their votes. He, he won by a very, very slim margin. But he needed their votes. And we will need every vote in this election. So it, early voting is good because then you can determine what the weather's like when you go to vote and how you're feeling that day when you go to vote. Because you don't know if you could be sick on election day. And maybe then you won't be able to make it to there to uh, vote. So it's really important. One other thing I'm going to tell you is that I decided that I would go to the NC Board of Elections to look on their website and see the information that I could get about my family and whether they were still registered in North Carolina. Because, of course, voter fraud is a very big issue. And so I went out there and I found that my father, who's been deceased since 2010, is still on the voting rolls. And I know that within 60 days of an election, you can't um, remove someone from the rolls. So, so I asked, well, what can I do to ensure that no one votes my father? And they said, you need to take a death certificate down to the Board of Elections and let them flag your family member so that no one will be able to vote that family member. Now, I'm telling you some things that aren't right to life things, but no one has mentioned them today, and I think it's so important that you know this. And I say these things because I'm interested in getting pro-life people elected, and I'm afraid that some people will want to use this election to keep pro-life people from being elected, and we can't let that happen. So I would encourage you in all of these things, pass this information on to your family and friends. Let them know. And finally, we know that if, if the elections turn out the way we want them, we will have a president and a Congress that can repeal, repeal Obamacare. And that is what needs to happen. We have to have Obamacare repealed. If we don't get those candidates we need, I hate to even think that that could happen, we must continue the fight. In North Carolina, we will be working to get North Carolina to opt out of abortion in the exchanges that can be set up in the states. There are 15 states currently that have already opted out uh, of abortion through the exchanges. But the tentacles of Obamacare are so, so broad that even the opt-out may not work. So we're going to have to be diligent, we're going to have to not give up the fight, and ultimately we know we are on the side of victory. And so we will hold on to that, that will be our hope for the future. Thank you.